Hi everybody, welcome back. In this video, I'll show you how to uh, work with the trail and line renderer. So let's get started. Here on the effects, when you right click on the hierarchy and you go to effects, go down to trail and you'll see the trail. So now it will create an empty, well, it looks like an empty game object, but it actually contains a trail renderer and a transform. So what the trail renderer does is you could have, let's say a character and when he's running, he has a, a trail behind him, like a trail of wind or of air or something. So if we move these, if we move this and the way we move this and just in case you guys don't know is uh, up here, they have different tools. I haven't gone by the tools yet, but uh, pretty much this is the hand tool. You can move around the camera with it. This is the move component tool. You can move anything with it. Uh, this rotates the object. And uh, this lets you scale an object. And then, um, and then also we have this one right here, which is good for text objects or UI objects, anything UI. It will let you actually uh, stretch out the thing, like uh, the view. Uh, let me show you an example real quick. If I go to UI text, uh, when you do that, it creates a canvas for you and a text object for you. So now that I am in this option right here, I could actually stretch everything out. I could shrink stuff, I could move stuff around. Yeah, that's what that tool does. Let me delete this canvas and this event system. And now this tool right here will let you do pretty much everything. It'll let you move it, rotate it, and scale it. And this one right here is a custom uh, tools. You could actually write scripts or something like that. And it'll let you write custom uh, tools right here. So right here, we're going to move. When we move the trail renderer, we can see a line. We can't see it in the game view because right here on the Z, it is currently at negative. We have to at least put it at one. And now we can see the line, okay? And then after that, we have this in the trail uh, renderer uh, component. It's a width. And this width, we can move it with the curve to fit our needs. And then we could also double click and uh, drag it down. So if we want it to be, uh, you know, closed at one point and then just uh, grow wider and wider the width. We could adjust it however we want. So this could even be like a bullet trail or something. Just, you know, a shot. And uh, when you shoot it, the bullet, you could see the, the trail of the bullet. And then this time right here, it lets you um, show how long it will be. So this will only last for a second. This, um, trail this one will only last for 0.2 of a second so as you can see it won't last very long and then um, you can also adjust the minimum vertex so the minimum vertex when you so let's uh, put this back how it was so the minimum vertex if you see when you turn you can see like a, a weird little edge at it a little weird edge right here if you bump this up you won't be able to actually turn too much and if you do turn it will be like a, a sharp turn see right here i can't turn no more but let's say i go a little bit down i'll be able to turn but it's kind of like a sharp turn and bump this all the way down auto destruct it destructs the game object when the trail is done so this would be good for uh, uh, a bullet so when you shoot the bullet uh, as soon as the, the bullet gets destroyed this will get destroyed too if you check it uh, emitting this will just let you see the trail render if you don't have this on you can't see it at all not even in the scene view or game view and then uh, color lets you change the color of it so you could pick any color. Like I said in the other video, this is a gradient and you could add more colors to the gradient. Uh, you usually just get two. It's usually white. 
to change the color just go right here and then change it whatever color you want and then you could also add more colors within the middle so just double click the the edge and then it will give you one of these little tabs and then you could just click right here and pick a different color and then you could slide it and then depending on where you slide it it will show like let's say a red one to give it more noticeable so right here it will be yellow and then it'll start turning red and then white but i can make it so it barely shows any white at the end so when i go like that you can see it barely shows any white at the end that would be the gradient and you could also do fixed so fixed is almost the same thing but instead of uh like it it mentions right here instead of blending the colors so instead of going from red and blending in little by little to i mean from yellow and blending little by little to red it will just blend in right away so just a hard snap so if you see that and if you compare this you can see that it kind of blends together so corner vertices is uh when you turn like this corner vertices will give you a, a more sharper or more uh kind of ragged look to the turns as you can see it's more more sharper right there but if i turn it up it'll give it more of a like a weird little corner turn and then in cap this would be at the beginning it'll give it it'll make it round kind of like a paintbrush or something like that see how it's round up here also there's alignment alignment you could align it to the view or to the transform there's texture mode so texture mode um you could stretch out the texture you could tile the texture you could distribute the texture per segment so each segment or you could repeat per segment so you could repeat the texture per segment and then right here you could generate um light data so that's good also for when you're building it you could like i mentioned in the video before you, you could uh when you build your game uh you could uh, generate a light da lighting data that way you don't uh waste too much uh it's not too performance heavy on your machine and then you could add shadow bias um shadow bias is just a shadow that prevents from uh, from this trail getting a shadow from itself pretty much and then right here i could add more materials if i would like so let's say i add uh or can i oh there you go so you can add more um materials so let's say i got i got two materials now uh, you can't see one of them, I guess, but they're both supposed to be there. But when you have different materials, you can kind of play around with it, see which one works, see which one doesn't. Let's see, um, you could also just change it to one. If you don't, if you just want one, just put it back to one, and then you could change the actual material of the line renderer. Like I did here, I'm using the particle system uh, material. And as you can see, it gives it like a little light. So if I would have it all, let's say white, you can see like a little trail. If I, if I make it all white and then um, you can see that trail. I could even bring the width down a bit on both sides. And almost looks like somebody running or something like that and they just got their wind trail now if you want to make a color fade at the end all you got to do is on top right here of the gradients is you click on it and where it says alpha just bring it down now you can see a little checkerboard pattern and that means that uh, it's gonna start uh, going transparent little by little so if you see it now it's not so bright, it becomes transparent. I can make it a little more apparent if I bring it closer. So now you see, you well, you could barely see it now. Bring it a little more right here. Now you could barely see the little trail. 
So you can mess around with that and like make yourself a running uh, trail or even a bullet trail. I don't know, maybe make it a little reddish, orangish, something like that. Just so it gives it that little appearance. Um, not even change it. A little orange like that. So it gives that little shooting appearance. We got the uh, lighting probes. Like I mentioned, uh, once I make the 3D videos or 3D tutorials, I'll show you what these are, the light probes and reflection probes. Uh, but you, you'll also be able to use it there with line renderers, uh, reflection probes as well. You could even use the sky box or the blind probes. Um, there's the additional settings right here. Uh, have motion vectors with the camera motion, just the object or the force. There is dynamic occlusion if you want dynamic occlusion uh, that helps perform for the renderer. Uh, there's sorting layers so you can have something uh, on top of another or you can have uh, this behind something else. And um, yeah, that's it for the trail renderer. Now, I'm going to also show you the line renderer. Um, so I'm going to show you the line, uh, line renderer real quick. So the line renderer almost looks exactly the same. The only difference here, make sure, make sure every time you add something to zero out the Z or even increase it to one. Um, and then after that, the line renderer, what you gotta do is a little different. So a line renderer, you could add lines or you could adjust lines. So right now we only have two points. So let me add another point. The way I would add this point is by um, clicking on this plus sign right here. And then I could input it either by motion uh, or mouse position or physics raycast. I usually use mouse position and just click anywhere on the scene. And as you can see, you can see a little line, but it's going almost through the back. The reason for that is because the Z right here, it's at negative 156. If I bump it up to one, you'll see the line right there. And I can keep doing that as much as I want. I can make a little circle, whatever I want. And then I could just add this one over here. And there you go. Now I have a little line renderer. Now with that, I could close this down and you could even position each separate one with this. So if I wanted to do, let's say one here and one here, and I could adjust it however I want. And then, um, for that, we could also, um, uh, right here, it says loop. So it will connect them wherever you end up at. It'll just connect them automatically. You could adjust the colors. Uh, the same thing gradient if you want or just one color whatever you want and then uh, the corner so each of these corners right here they'll get rounded out I don't know if you could really see it uh, this one's a better example this one's sharp see how it gets rounded out and then uh, in cap it will just be the the ends of it so if you see there's zero and then uh, let me put 90, there you go. It rounds it out. Okay, and then we got um, alignment right here. Alignment, you could put view or transform Z, whatever you want. Uh, the alignment is just the lines, uh, it lines the, the line renderer to whatever you want, the view or either the transform. Texture mode, you could stretch the texture, you could tile it, distribute it per segment or repeat it. Shadow, ba uh, shadow bias, like I mentioned uh, earlier, it's just so it don't reflect shadows off uh, itself. Uh, generate light data, use world space, so if you want to use world space instead, uh, instead of using uh, local space. And, and then uh, there's materials, materials, you could also add uh, more materials. You could add different materials, however you want. Um, right now I don't really got too much good examples of materials, but um, yeah, you get the picture. You just add different um, materials here. 
and you can kind of see it. It adjusts. And then after that, after materials, we've got lighting, lighting, you can cast shadows, you can receive shadows. Um, if you don't really need it, I, I suggest you turn it off for performance. Just a little quick tip. Um, lighting probes, reflection probes, same thing. If you don't need it, turn it off. And uh, I'll make a future video about this again. I won't forget. Also, there's motion vectors. Motion vectors, um, you could use the camera motion, uh, the object motion, or no motion. Then you could use dynamic occlusion, sorting layer, same thing if you want it to be in front, if you want it to be behind. Um, an example would be real quick. Let me make that uh, trail renderer real quick. And I'll put this one to be in front. So I'll put the number higher uh, than this one. And I'll make sure that the layer is uh, below. So the ones that are on top are gonna be behind. The ones that are on the bottom are gonna be in front. Hopefully that made sense. If you need help on that sorting layer, um, let me know. I'll help you out. So now I got this trail. I'll bring it up again to the one. Got this trail. And as you can see, it's in, on top of it. But let's say I put it negative one. Now it's below it. So that's the, the, the sorting layer. So that's it for this video. I'm gonna wrap it up. Thank you for watching. If you liked it, if you need help with anything um, in any video, uh, in anything you need, just let me know. I'll be happy to help you. Thank you once again. Please like and subscribe uh, if you haven't. And uh, if you're enjoying the video so far, let me know in the comments below. Thank you for everything. Bye.